What's up, nerdlings? Yo, nerdlings. Hey, like I even need to ask, do you nerd for ring fairs? Uh, yeah. So you nerd? The Oklahoma Renaissance Festival held at the Castle of Muskogee. So, what do you think? Were you glad to be back? Ah, uh, just a teensy tiny bit glad. I was so excited to go back. I made an entire weekend out of it for us. You did. I got us a hotel room starting Friday night. The fair was on Saturday and we came home on Sunday. Yeah, and that was very nice because we got to make a full day from opening to close, not feeling rushed, not having it was uh, really nice. that lag of driving. It's about a three hour drive mm -hmm. for us. And then also being able to close out the fair and go back to our room and just mm -hmm. relax and not have that long drive home as well. It was a little odd though, because I kept thinking, cause we usually, you know, get there about noon, one o'clock ish. And so I kept thinking, oh my gosh, we've been here forever. The fair's gotta be closing soon. And I'd look at my watch and it'd be like 11 and I'd be like, this is great. Wait a minute. I got all the time I want. On top of being excited to be back and making a weekend out of it, we could not have asked for better weather for this weekend. It was fast. perfect. Now, generally, we have the bad luck of going when it's very, very warm. But we've been smart. We have a certain pathway that we yes, cut through we there. It takes us down to the little Italian villa area. We usually get a drink that you're a very nice, fond of. The Frozen Princess. Yes, a nice <laughs> iced mocha. So that starts us off keeping us yep. cool. And that usually keeps us in the trees for the most mm -hmm. part. Then when we venture over to the castle grounds, that does open it up. we end up in the castle where it's usually air conditioned. Uh, funny enough though, this time I don't think they had the AC no, on. No, they didn't have the air conditioner on because I always notice because I like to stand in the doorway for about 20 minutes while I let the air cool me down. <laughs> <laughs> the sun was out, but it was behind clouds most of the day, so it wasn't too bright. Just, I mean, it was just like just the right, perfect setting for the very first day of the first <laughs> season since COVID, and it was awesome. Now, since you brought up COVID, let's talk about masks. In some of the footage that you're bound to see, you're going to see us without masks on. You're going to see a lot of people without masks on. You did your homework. I did. You did your research. Uh, Tulsa... I don't know about the whole state of Oklahoma, but the Tulsa area. Tulsa Muskogee had pretty much two weeks or a week before it opened, had just gotten rid of the mask mandate. So there were signs everywhere that says, please wear masks, yada, yada, yada. But people weren't requiring you to wear them. We kind of walked down that median. When we were out in the open air, we usually had our masks down just, you know, for comfort. Yeah. But whenever we did go into the shops or talk to any of the vendors, we tried to remember to get those masks back up, you know, out of respect, make sure that, yeah. you know, when you're in those closer quarters, it's like, well, uh, let's kind of do our part there. Yeah. It was one of those things. It was busy for its very first opening day, but it wasn't incredibly crowded like it has been before in the past. So we were able to be in the outside fresh air and be socially distanced. So we felt safe. We're back at the fair, wanted to be here. We've got plenty of time. The weather's great. We're taking care of the whole mask issue. Let's get some food. I'm on a stick. <laughs> Something that we love, love, love to get there is yes. the lamb on the stick that it's has become a staple. A tradition. This is one of the few places that we've been to that serves lamb, to my yeah. knowledge. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of the other fairs do. We uh, just Kansas found City, it yet. St. Louis <laughs> Central. Hey, if any of you guys do, please let us know. Yeah, because we uh, want to try. We're missing it. out, obviously. <laughs> he has to pull the meat off because she's a lady. That's how a lady eats. But we did try some new things. Uh, we had some word of mouth trying the Full Monty. Come on down to the Fool's Pantry at the Castle of Muskogee and try us a Full Monty burrito. You got 
sliced and fried potatoes with steak and bell peppers and onions. It's almost like a cheesesteak, but it's a burrito, and you got cheese in it too. So come on down to the to get you a full money at the Fool's Pantry at the Castle of Muskogee. All right, it is time to see the goods, so let's open this up. And it was all sautéed cool. together, so all the flavors mingled. Oh, it was, it was good. I'm going in for the full Monty. That's pretty good. <laughs> now the nice thing is we like to, to share our food, which means we can get one thing, split it, and still have room to go and try something mm -hmm. else. Uh, that also helps with the pocketbook, just it does. FYI. It does. Uh, we also got a root beer float, which was very, very good. I love my root beer floats. <laughs> what do you got? I got a root beer float with ice cream. It was also really good after having a really salty snack. It was nice to have that root beer to kind of, the sweet to kind of wash it down with. Yes, such as the moink balls. They're slow cooked. These meatballs, they're wrapped with maple bacon. Moink balls. Oh. Hence the name Moink Balls. Moo for beef, oink for pig. All right, you've had your first Moink Ball, so tell us all about it. It was pretty dead gum good. I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, I don't have much experience with, with too many different balls, but that was a good one. Wow. What drew you to the Moink Balls? Was it the bacon? It was the bacon. Definitely the bacon. Was it maple bacon? Is that mm -hmm. what it said? Yep. It was tasty. And you're thinking that the best thing to wash that moink ball down with is probably going to be a root beer float. Is that right? Definitely. Hmm. Wonder where we'll find one. Oh well, that's handy. Moink. <laughs> <laughs> moink. Is that like something out of space balls? Sounds like something Mork would say. <laughs> nanu, nanu, Mork for Mork. Would you like a moink ball? <laughs> mm. I'll pass. Thanks. <laughs> Beyond all of the new foods that we tried, we also got to see some new vendors. We do like to try to chat up the vendors when they have a free moment and get them to tell us a little bit about their product, uh, the crafting that goes into it. And it really was cool to see some new vendors there because you get new stuff. Mm -hmm. Anything in particular brand new to the Oklahoma Ren Fair, Castle Muskogee, that you found this year? I did. We found some Vikings. We did. And I bought some stuff from those Vikings. I bought these really cool keychain dragon eyes. You could either have them in keychain form or they also would make them into eye patches. I settled on these two. There was like 25 of them I wanted, but I think I'm gonna settle for these two. <laughs> I think that's very clever. So, you know, it's like you already have a functional <laughs> item with a keychain or, yeah. Yar. <laughs> there be dragons here <laughs> in my eye. Do you have a Kleenex or something so I can get them out of there? It kind of burns. These are all 100% handmade, so there was not any one of them that was exactly alike. And I found a ton of them I liked, but I had to narrow it down, and I managed to narrow it down to three. The one that I liked the best was probably this one here with the green eye. It's really cool because it's kind of like a black um, skin, but I would say like an iridescent blue and like kind of silver sheen to the scales. And then of course, you know, a beautiful green eye. And because I was wearing purple that day, I had to find a dragon that matched my outfit. So that's why I went with the purple dragon. And then there was just something about this silver one, no pun intended, there was something about that blue eye. It just kept staring at me. And I mean, I know this all sounds punny and everything, but there was just something odd about it that just kept calling to me and telling me I had to buy this. Oh yeah, yeah. Tractor beam. <laughs> Suck me right in. Is that weird? A little bit. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you're a little weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, what else did you pick up? Well, I also picked up a shot glass. What'd you get? Viking shot glass. Nice. And it's made from a horn. I know. So in case you don't want to, uh, you know, fill up your whole flaggard of horn or whatever. There you go. Just, just a quick shot just a little little shot glass of whatever ails you and we do enjoy collecting shot glasses from different places that we go so i got a bigger drinking vessel <laughs> now 
You've had your drinking horn for a while. Yes. And I never really had any kind of my own fair drinking vessel until we went to this booth and I found me a really cool all leather, handmade, hand painted tankard. Even the handle is just a stiff piece of, of leather and it's a good size handle in there. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Ooh. Nice. But the really neat thing about this one is it's sealed with wax, food grade wax on the inside. So you don't have to worry about the leather getting messed up. The only thing is you can't drink hot drinks in there. Obviously it's covered in wax. The lady I bought this from, she said, all you really have to do is just kind of do swishing out with the water, the way the wax is in there to keep the uh, fair dust out of there. There's a nice leather lid that goes on top and then a bamboo straw. So I'm 100% eco-friendly here. And you got the nice lid emblazoned with a couple I of dragons. I did. I got one with two dragons on there. And I said, that's me and you. <laughs> and then just to bling it up because I like bling, I got me this really cool handmade um, cup charm. Well, let's talk about the print on the cup itself. On the front, we've got a beautiful phoenix. Normally, phoenix are red and yellows and all kinds of fire colors, but they wanted to go with more like a, a blue flame for this one. To me, it seems a bit more magical than a regular phoenix because like anytime you're watching a movie or a TV show, for some reason, when someone's casting magic with fire, it always seems like the spell works better when the flame turns blue. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> I like that. The spell, it's going to work a little better if you can get the blue in there. For some reason, whenever they're casting it and the flame turns blue, then they know their spell works. So that's kind of why I feel like it makes it more magical because the flame went blue. <laughs> well, we all know how much I love my dragons, so I... Kept, you went crazy I kept the with dragon, dragon theme stuff. going. I don't know why. It was just, there was literally just hanging on the wall. And for some reason, it just kept calling to me. That was That's kind of what happened this whole weekend was things called to me. Either that or I just hadn't been shopping in a really long time and I just wanted to buy stuff. I think it was that one. <laughs> there was just something really cool about this orange dragon skull and it's leather. So it smells good. I love my leather. <laughs> Ooh, it smells good. So there was a new vendor that we had never seen there before called the Dragon Hatchery. And they had these adorable little like barrettes or just clips, whatever you wanted. Leather dragons, again, leather, big, big thing. They were all handmade. So every single one of them was different. They were different colors, different elements. So I picked out this really neat like red and green dragon. And then a beautiful blue dragon because blue is my favorite color. And then I picked out a dragon for you, which actually you had your eye on. So I did. obviously I know what you like, but I picked you out a nice little dragon and he's kind of, he's a black, like there's a slight blue sheen to him, but he kind of looks like a metal dragon. I thought he was pretty cool and he looks good on your outfits. Something really nice about these guys too was the price point. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever you go to a Ren fair, a lot of the stuff, most of the stuff is going to be handmade, handcrafted. So expect those premium prices, you know, come prepared. Certain stuff isn't going to be cheap, but a lot of it really is made to last. I mean, we've seen people that carry stuff around that they've had for years. These guys though, they were priced just right. The little ones were 15 and kind of went up from there, depending on the size of them. So you have that price point to where anyone can take something home from the fair, you know, and it mm -hmm. really has that feel of having gone to a Ren Fair because of the whole dragon motif to it. The other nice thing I liked, really liked about these is they're very practical because like I said, they're a barrette or a clip. You can clip it on to anything. So if you wanted to clip it anywhere on your costume, that was perfect. Or clip it in your hair as a hair barrette. So if this is something I can actually use outside of the Ren Fair and clip it in my hair. One of my all time favorite vendors, which sees there every year and I will be very sad the year I go to the fair and he's not there, but my dragon pets, I love getting these. And this year I, I had, cause I couldn't go last year. I had to have extras. The funny thing is, is when I was talking to the owner and he said, how many do you have? And I said, well, does this count as one or two? <laughs> Cause I've got, I had one on and then I had one at home. And then I said, so I've either got four 
or five, depending on how many you count there. Now this year, you specifically went after a two-handed yes. dragon. Yes, this you year. You were very excited to yes. get this. And uh, it was actually what I was going to do last year. I knew that the next time I went and bought one, it was going to be a two-headed dragon. So I had planned it out. Like this year, I was going to get a two-headed dragon, and the next year I was going to get the zombie dragon. I really liked this one because when you hold him up to the light, he's the purple is just really pretty when you see through his wings and he's he's all glittery and the one thing i love about these dragons it's really really good rubber they're really bendable and they just they always stay in whatever position you put them in and i've got a couple this will be my third glow in the dark dragon and i am impressed the one that i bought i bought it like four or five years ago and it's filthy dirty with fair dust and it still glows super super happy with these love them now as you were going through talking to the the creator of these dragons telling him what you like he was letting you know what is to come and by the way i think he sells these online too doesn't he, he does uh he has a facebook page and um a, an actual website for them so and... uh first and foremost anything that we can link in the description below it will be there so go check it out and start uh, building up your own dragon collection so we are dragon pets and we have all kinds of dragons whatever dragon you may need we do make them all by hand so no two are ever quite alike and they all have their own characteristics to them not only can you just put them on your desk but you can bend them and put them right on a rearview mirror backpacks or you can wear them and not only is that you can also glow in the dark but whatever your dragons need whether it's a cute one Mean ones, zombie ones, we have all of them. So all you gotta do is come on down to one of the Ren Fairs, your local Ren Fairs, and we'll be right here. He gave you the hookup on one of these guys too because I think he could see how excited you were. Yeah, because I was actually, I bought this one and I was only gonna buy the one, but you were talking to him for a while and, you know, eyes will wander. And I kept wandering over to this guy and he just kept talking to me and talking <laughs> to me. So that's, that's... So another for the collection. Another one for the collection, yes. You're, you're going to need a, like a huge, what, what would you call a habitat for dragons? It, it'd probably have to have like cave walls and like mountain cliff gonna sides. Need something. Uh, but you, you, you got to make sure that they're, they're free to fly. You've got plenty of cattle to graze on. <laughs> I don't know. The thing that I love about these though is they all have different expressions on their faces. And that's what drew me to this one is just that little expression on his face. There's just something about him that I really liked. Well, the only thing I believe you enjoy from Oklahoma more than the dragons are the rats. Yep, I do love my plague rats. And I picked up some plague rats this time. First thing that I got is a nice little sporin. Oh, he's a squished plague rat. He is, he's skinned. But there's a beautiful thistle on here and it's just a nice just pouch just a generic sporin pouch with a a fun rat head on it so that'll look great on my on my renfair vest but i will say i really don't give a rat's arse at all <laughs> i just don't He's these were funny. I know. He's so tongue in cheek. I love what he does with them. But this is the rat's arse. They've got full ones. They've got ones where they're sitting up with pouches. So are you are you going to give that one away or are you going to keep it? I think I'm going to keep this one. So you're not going to give a rat's arse? To anyone. <laughs> And last but not least, we all know how much I love my plushies and it wouldn't be a trip without buying a plushie. And I bought a little miniature Tom. In rat form. Look at that, he's got a Tom shirt on. <laughs> but I thought this was adorable. It's just a nice, lovely little plague rat. And he's got a lei and a Hawaiian shirt on. And I just, I couldn't leave without getting him. He was so cute. And these are all handmade, hand sewn together. So it's very impressive.
is something that was really cool too when we were speaking to the vendors of all the play grants somebody had actually come up to them they had a little bit of a uh, rat emergency they were right there to help them fix it mm -hmm. right on the spot and that's what i love about the vendors um i believe that the woman that sold you the the leather mug she was helping someone out with uh -huh. something as well and, and that's what's so yeah. cool about these vendors like they're so engaged with the people that come to the fair and always willing to help them because they know that a lot of the stuff you're buying isn't i mean they do have some stuff that's decorative for at home but a lot of the stuff you're buying there is stuff that you want to add to your costume you know and so she was saying that even if you bought the mug mm -hmm. and you don't buy the lid you can come back later and buy the lid from her and as long as you've got the mug she can make it fit and and yeah. anything like that she goes if anything breaks on it bring it back we'll get you fixed the one thing that i left with was the ancient arms of the weston family name now for years i've checked these out mm -hmm. whenever we go to the fairs and i thought you know what it's it's time to uh go ahead and pop on it and get one but it's really cool it talks about the history of the weston name but talking about how you know they came from europe where they were in Europe and when they came to America, where they migrated. Some of them migrated north. I should have followed because uh, the weather is a little more fair up there most <laughs> of the time. But I do like the fact that it has our clan crest on it and, and, the, and it also has our coat of arms so we know what we look like. Well, as if just being back at the fair, the experience of getting all kinds of new goodies wasn't amazing enough. One of my favorite things were all the people that came up to us and recognized us for our previous Oklahoma videos. The reason we do the videos the way that we do is to really try to showcase the fairs, the events, the things that we go to, to really give people an idea of, is this something that I want to check out? Or maybe it's not, maybe it's not worth the three hour drive to some people. But it was so, so cool having people come up to us and tell us, hey, I watched your video and the reason I'm here today is because your video. I saw it and I had to come here. Or uh, telling us, you know, thank you so much for making the video the way you did and showing the fair. I've seen a couple of other Oklahoma Ren Fair videos where people are there with their friends and that's great, but I don't know your friends, so I just want to see the park. So that really, really felt awesome to have yeah. that happen. It's a nice validation to know that you're doing what you're doing is doing good and that's exactly why we do it yeah you know the whole purpose of these videos is to show you how cool this stuff can be how much fun it can be and also maybe tip you off on some things that you missed out on i found you an outfit tom turn it around there you go <laughs> look who i found <laughs> in closing what an amazing trip so glad to be back at a Ren fair so gracious and thankful both to the people that were kind enough to come up and tell us that they had watched our videos thank you guys so much yes, this is what you, we love you, to do you. is sharing our nerdum with you if we like it we nerd it and we love to nerd it with you guys and with rats and we really, really had such a great time. It was so awesome talking to the vendors, the showgoers, the other guests that were at the fair. Thank you all so much for another great year. And we really, really hope to see many more of you. Yes, there. we are not done. We will be going back and back and back. And if you guys know of a good Ren Fair, let us know and we will see if it's close enough to where we go. We like to try to keep it in a three hour radius, <laughs> but who knows? We might venture out maybe another hour. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, I believe now is the time to turn it over to them so they can leave some comments about all of your dragons and rats. And uh, if they would like to do you give have the video a, a like. Do you have a rat's arse to give Yeah. about our video? Yeah. I hope you do. Give, give a rat's arse. <laughs> And like the video, subscribe, <laughs> hit the notification bell so that you know the next time we're at a Ren Fair and you can see what that one's all about and see what she picks up next. I bet it's more dragons. 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 <laughs> I love dragons. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public because we have merchandise over there. Hit us up on the Retro Refresh. Do you think they like dragons over there? <laughs> they better, or they're not as cool as I thought they were. Very true. <laughs> and nerdlings, remember... If we like it. We nerd it. Huzzah! Huzzah! Clink!
Actually, hold that thought. <laughs> it's like you knew the very second I was about. It's like, yeah, <laughs> having a strunk. James Bond's having a strunk. I am James Bond. I'm having a stroke. Oh no, not again. To forget something? Mm hmm, my lipstick. Oh, I thought I meant forget something. Pick up. Nope. Girl is naked without her lipstick. Now naturally say it to our robotic friend there. <laughs> Hello, robotic friend. Ready? And that's always fun to get to know them. And it really, Jesus. Now, normally they always like to make Phoenix blue or, okay, no, nope, it's already <laughs> blue. But I just love this just yellow like dragon skull. Yellow? Orange? This is orange. Hello, orange. I passed colors in kindergarten. Oof. Is that our low battery light? Yeah, but I think it's it's fine for right now. Okay. Ready? <laughs>